and uh, I will try to summarize uh, this idea. It's only one concept that I want to introduce and to discussion. <coughs> we are started building a new environment which is covering the whole planet, a digital environment based on the new communication information technologies. This is the first time in history that humanity has implemented an artificial global environment which is unfolding without barriers or frontiers. The support of this environment is connectivity among people and between people and, and things. We have proposed some uh, year from now as our academy that connectivity should be considered a human right. To enforce this right and the corresponding duties, we need to educate the different generations on the power and limits of the new digital environment in order to ensure a sustainable digital environment, a sustainable digital environment. This digital education must start early in the family and in school and continue through the different ages. And here the elders should play a significant role in the quality of the digital environment where sustainability is key. We are all responsible in the care of our digital environment, our second home in this planet. And we can learn a lot from our successes and failures towards the care of the natural environment. We must learn and teach about the care of our digital environment, as we should do for the care of our common home, our natural environment. In fact, the great novelty for humanity, for humanity is that we have constructed a new home on top of the natural one, and both need our constant care because they interact in a great variety of ways. The natural environment has been given to us. The digital environment instead is a human construct with new properties in permanent and accelerated evolution that we cannot find in nature. The increasing interaction between the two environments exceeds our imagination. The Internet of Things is one impressive example of this trend. And this interaction should be improved and protected by a sustainable digital and ecological education. This is essentially an ethical engagement, not only a technological one. This new ecosystem must support a healthy internet to keep our digital environment in good shape and provide the necessary means to face the increasing dangers of all kinds of crimes that are taking place everywhere in our connected world. Aggression, violence, banning, grooming, sexting, sexual abuse, trafficking, commercial exploitation, etc., etc. But fortunately, many organizations, public and private, are dedicated to control, eradicate, and punish the multiple perversions that are corrupting the digital world. Hundreds or thousands of digital initiatives around the world are today working to protect the most fragile sectors of the population, children and families in the first place. It is a moral engagement on human dignity. We can mention, for instance, the international initiatives such as UNICEF called We Protect global alliance against child abuse online. 
worldwide cooperation to stop the crime on online sexual abuse and exploitation. <clears throat> we had last year here in the Academy uh, with the Foundation for Worldwide Cooperation, uh, Romano Prodis uh, was the president of this foundation, on internet connectivity as a human right. And we stressed the fact that it is necessary to reaffirm the role of the internet as a primary means to enable inclusion, efficiency, and promote innovation in different economic sectors as such as healthcare, agriculture, environment, jobs, gender equity, and mutual understanding. Education is the clearest example that the, that the internet is a human right. Even in the 21st century, hundreds, hundreds of millions of children have no access to school and leave school or leave school unable to read. With internet connectivity, they could improve learning capacity. This is of vital importance for the poorest children of the planet. You can see our statement on the link of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. Moreover, as Pope Francis <coughs> recently declared to participants of the Congress of Child Dignity in the digital world, we have to keep our eyes open and not hide an unpleasant truth we would rather not see. In fact, the net is also has a sacred dimension, dimension, the dark net, where evil finds ever new, effective, and pervasive ways to, exact, to act and to expand. A sustainable digital environment must become a place of justice and peace for all. And the main path to reach this goal for humanity is education. I will finish to uh, say something that about how this works in some special <coughs> fields. For instance, for talents and handicaps. The digital environment expands our cognitive capacities in the most diverse situations, giving unique opportunities to develop our talents and to overcome many limitations. It is in the margins of society where the impact of the digital environment is most needed, in particular in special education and rehabilitation, in the social inclusion of refugees and immigrants, and in remote places without schools. I have some experience of that for the last decades in my life. I will be, I was always working with the disabled person and doing research on technology in the most remote places of the world. And this, the number of disabled people that have significantly improved their life with their help of the digital technologies is increasing. And their success becomes a continuous source of inspiration to expand a sustainable digital environment for all. Our dear colleague, Stephen Hawking, gave us a remarkable example of a whole life of impressive scientific achievements and social interactions with his exceptional courage and his ability to overcome the extreme restraints of a severe lateral amyotrophic sclerosis with a clever use of the digital environment. This is uh, an asset that uh, certainly is a model for all of us. And we can also, following uh, many of Pope Francis' recommendations, we would reflect also on the impact of the digital inclusion of the senior adults 
in a globalized society. This is very important, uh, how we are saying that uh, old age is getting younger. And as an example, we learned, we can mention the success of Uruguay with the program Ibirapita, which is giving half a million tablets to those retired citizens over 65 who do not work and receive a monthly pension of less than $800 per, per month. Ibirapita was launched by the government of Uruguay three years ago to reduce the digital gap in the third age. And now grandparents are in contact with their grandchildren. And this is a great feat indeed in a, in a population that everyone by law, every child in Uruguay and every teacher of Uruguay has a tablet connected to the internet. Therefore, and uh, I'm glad that Professor Zikik is here because I'm just coming from uh, Eriche when we had a very nice meeting on immigration. And this, we understand that mass immigration is uh, also a planetary emergency today. And for them, for many of them, for most of them, to be connected is certainly a human right. Thank you very much. Yes.